Well, hi, everybody. It's that gratitude guy, David George Brook, with another guest on my gratitude podcast interview, The Pandemic. And today I'm happy to have Dr. Morgan Oaks, a good buddy of mine I met a number of years ago and we became good friends and we both happened to have the same birthday. So of course I knew that was a good thing. So Morgan, welcome to the podcast. Hey David, always great to be in conversation with you and excited to be, uh, be a part of this today. Excellent, thank you, thank you. So let me start you right off with a question. Uh, what, did, what is Morgan's best coping mechanism in dealing with this pandemic? Um, what I've really had to lean into is the pandemic, the finances, what to do with work, what to do with other people's stress. All of that's outside of me and I really have no control over it. And I think, you know, if you look at personal growth or counseling or spiritual practices, it's, you know, let go of what you can't control and control what you can. And mm -hmm. so I've really just leaned into myself and, and those practices that we know that we should be doing no matter what now's the time where we actually need them. So, mm. you know, my gratitude practice, my, you know, staying healthy, exercising, meditating, um, doing reading, um, you know, I'm really leaning into all the practices of, of mindfulness and, and staying centered on the inside of myself and doing what I can to let go of those things outside of me that I can't control. Mm, that's good. And, and then the other half of it is, you know, I grew up in, in Wyoming and I'm, I'm not necessarily a huge fan of country music, but one song I always remember is when you're going through hell, keep on going. Oh, that's a good one. And, yeah. and I think what, what pulls people forward is hope. And right yeah. now there's a lot of variables in the future. You know, the planet has shifted. Uh, we'll probably never go back to where we were, you know, three months ago, you know, after True. the world wars, there's a shift after nine 11, there's a shift after the depression, there was a shift. And so I'm like, okay, what are the things I can be hopeful about? And so I'm doing some personal growth, taking some classes, and I'm trying to figure out like, what's the next thing I'm going to build? What's the next mm. thing I'm going to lean into? And, you know, whether that's repairing uh, or improving, you know, personal relationships, whether it's something around health, whether it's home improvements, whether it's, um, yeah, what, what comes next in my business, I'm just taking this as a nice pause to lean into myself and pick something in the future that I can be hopeful about and start being creative around. That's good. That's, I love your attitude as I always do. And you mentioned uh, being hopeful and gratitude. We're certainly in uncertain times. As you said, things, there's always a shift when something like this of this magnitude may be the biggest in any of our lifetimes. lifetimes. Mm -hmm. What would you say is at the top of your list, maybe the top two or three things you're grateful for right now? Th those people around me. You know, I, I do three gratitudes. I, I do gratitudes in a lot of different ways, but one of the ways that's stayed pretty solid is three gratitudes right before I go to bed. Nice. And almost every night, sometimes I put this one in as like that set point, and then I do three additional ones, but those people around me. Nice. You know, friends, family, loved ones. I have, you know, I have so many people I can lean into. And at this point, it's for a video call or a phone call. Um, but I'm just really grateful for those people around me that, uh, that have my back and that, that I can lean into. And, you know, there's some times where I'm really needing to lean into them because I, you know, I don't have the strength to carry myself, you know, and then you rebuild your energy and then, you know, and then I'm grateful for the people around me that now I'm getting to help them. That's so. excellent. It's excellent. So we always say, if you want to help yourself, help other people. And I think yeah. as a doctor, from your perspective, what, and or as just as many, any other perspective as yours, as well as being a doctor, but you're very motivated. You do a lot of things. You juggle a lot of balls. Any thoughts or tips or ideas or things people might do while they're kind of housebound and to take advantage of this time where we can't really go outside our homes? So one of the ways I, I get a lot of uh, my inspiration through metaphor and through story, through mm -hmm. different visions. And I was thinking about, you know, you're at a wedding and they're playing the chicken dance, you know, na 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 Right. And that song is playing and it's a bit ridiculous and it goes faster and faster and faster and faster until nobody can keep up. And the DJ stops the music. And at that point, there's choice right? Some people are exhausted and they're like, oh my God, I'm really out of shape. I can't even do the chicken dance. 
Mm. You know, some people are laughing because, oh my God, this is amazing. When's the last time I had this much fun? I need to bring more play into my life. Some people are like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to do this again. Some are like, I don't like that song. I'm going to wait till a slow dance song comes on so I can connect with my, my significant other in a more meaningful way. Some people are like, you know what? The conversation that I want to be having at this wedding is with, you know, grandma Betty over in the corner and she's not actually able to be on the dance floor. So I'm going to leave the dance floor to reconnect with grandma Betty because Mm -hmm. that's what's important right now. Right. And we're at a point where we've all been in a chicken dance right now on this planet. It's been going faster and faster and faster. And the DJ finally hit pause, hit stop. Mm -hmm. And now we're all standing on this dance floor going, what do I do next? Yeah. Right. So I think this is a beautiful point of whether you want to call it evolution or choice, or we're getting to ask that question of like, what comes next and what's actually important and meaningful for me, you know, at this, you know, at this time. And so, um, you know, this is a great time to work on your fitness, work on your relationship, you know, maybe your business, there's some businesses that will go away right now and they will never come back. Right. Right. And so, if, if you were starting out fresh, if you were starting out new today, what would you do? You know, and some people will keep going in their business. Some people are going to be forced or they're going to make a choice to go lateral and and where their income comes from. Right. There'll probably be a lot of babies nine months from now. There'll probably Mm -hmm. be a lot of divorces in the next few months. And this is a choice where, um, I believe it's Neil Donald Walsh. Uh, who's a great, great spiritual writer has a book entitled when everything changes, change everything. Mm, Right. So right now I feel like this is that opportunity to really stop and ask the question, what is it that I want? Mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, financial career. What do I want? And you know, the DJ has hit pause. We've got a little spaciousness and uh, just, just be conscious and, and move forward with what feels best. That's nice. I really like that. Somebody said on one of the podcasts the other day about uh, when this is over and when, and we don't know when that's going to be, but uh, when it's over, you want to hit the ground running and, and really kind of have a plan together. And I thought it was really good, a good thought about have a plan for all those things you said, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual relationships, whatever it might be. So it's a, it's a time, I think that we'll look back, there will be a number of silver linings in all of this too. And it's yeah. hard to see sometimes as people are dying and they're suffering and people can't even say goodbye to their loved ones and some of the things that this has caused. But I do think there'll be a number of things that will we can really look to, to, to really, really propel us forward, as you said. So, so last question, be either before or after, um, or during this rather, does, does Morgan have a, I love to mention people in the third person, by the way, does Morgan have a um, quote or a philosophy or sort of a mantra or something that you've kind of used throughout your life that helps you get through this? Or, you know, some people this too shall pass or anything else that's kind of helped you as you go through something like this? Yeah. Well, I think, I think that speaking in third person piece, I'm looking forward to when you start speaking in yourself in third person. Well, right now, what David would love to ask is, uh, Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Uh, like some as, levity. And as a good friend, uh, when that day happens, I will, uh, Please. I will call you out on it. So, uh, you're welcome in advance. That's um, funny. That's funny. Yeah. I, I think, I think that changes. I think that changes. And in one of the mantras, I think you and I are similar in that we really, we look at those silver linings. We have a lot of gratitude. We realize how blessed we are. Even when we're wishing that we were in a different place, we still have grat- uh, gratitude uh, for where we're at. One right. of the things I'm leaning into right now, it's uh, like I said, I'll have visions, metaphors. I also, song lyrics will come up, you know, mm-hmm. or a book title or something like that. And you know, it was probably late 80s, early 90s, REM came out with the song. It's the end of the world as we know it. Right. And I feel fine. Mm-hmm. To be honest, that's where I'm at. That's I neat. Really I like that. I really feel fine. And I, I'm, I'm staying curious. I'm staying open. I'm trying to do the smart things with my business and my finances and, you know, making sure I have enough food available in the house. And I'm trying to do the, the smart, smart, physical grounded things. Right. Um, but ultimately this, um, we can't control it. It's already happening. And I believe that it's going to work out. 
you know, and I'm just hoping that whatever lessons are here for me, myself, um, you know, for the communities, for the families, for, <clears throat> excuse me, for, for people in general, I hope that we can really get the lessons and move forward, honestly, as a, in a much better way than we were, you know, coming into 2020. I hope that we can have some different clarity that we've reprioritized what's actually important you know, for our, for ourselves, for our businesses, for our families, for our communities, for the planet. Um, so that's the one that I'm leaning into. I and, like that. and rather than, rather than doing a bunch of things that I thought I needed to do coming into 2020, mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to ask better questions. Oh, that's always a good you thing. Know? So get it, instead of getting frantic about a priority from 2019, uh, I'm trying to just ask really good questions. And instead of moving from fear, I'm trying to move from a really conscious place of if I was starting over right now, if I just started thinking about this right now, what would be my best decision? Because a lot of the, a lot of the things that were true four months ago, aren't true anymore. True. And so I'm just trying to ask good questions and, and talk to, you know, to people that I really honor their opinion, intelligent people like yourself and, just trying to stay curious and open and um, and I'm trying to have a plan for when all of this is finished. I would agree with your other yes. speaker. And yeah. I also would say with the caveat of uh, there's a, a saying that a spiritual teacher of mine shares, which is be open to the outcome, but not attached to the outcome. Oh, I like that. You know, cause we, we don't know when this is going to transition and uh, you know, like a snowstorm in Seattle hits like once a year when it hits, everything shuts down. It's a mess. And as a business owner, you're, you're tracking the amount of dollars you've lost and, and everything. But you usually know that next week and probably for the rest of the year, things are going to be fine. Yeah. That's not like this. This is more like a snowstorm in Wyoming where it might hit in October and you don't know, you, you know, the roads might mostly be closed until next April. Right. Right. This right. isn't going to end slow and we don't know how it's going to play out. So I'm trying to make a plan for the future, but be open to the outcome and not attached to the outcome because there's a lot of variables. So that's true. That's yeah. true. I like that. And I like your, uh, I like, I said the tips and thoughts or a mantra or a, um, uh, something that you go through. I'm going to add song lyrics to that too. Cause I like that the end of the world as we know it. And I'm fine. Cause that's a, you know, a lot of people probably think it's the end of the world. You could, you sure, certainly would think so with the amount of toilet paper that was be sold, being sold everywhere. <laughs> Gosh, the world's coming to an end. We have to have toilet paper. So, well, listen, thank you so much. Tremendous tips and thoughts and uh, your viewpoint. I always appreciate a lot. And so thank you so much for being on the podcast. My pleasure, David. We'll talk soon.